क्वेश्चन ओवर हेयर इज द सोलिबिलिटी प्रोडक्ट द सोलिबिलिटी प्रोडक्ट ऑफ अ सॉल्ट द सोलिबिलिटी प्रोडक्ट ऑफ अ सॉल्ट हैविंग जर्नल फॉर्मूला एम एक्स टू हैविंग जर्नल फॉर्मूला एम एक्स टू इन वॉटर इज फोर इंटू टेन डेज टू पावर माइनस ट्वेल्व ओके द सोलिबिलिटी प्रोडक्ट दैट मीन्स के एस पी वैल्यू ऑफ अ सॉल्ट हैविंग जर्नल फॉर्मूला एम एक्स टू इन वॉटर इज फोर इंटू टेन डेज टू पावर माइनस ट्वेल्व द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन इन मोल्स पर लीटर द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन इन मोल्स पर लीटर ऑफ एम टू पॉजिटिव आयन्स द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन इन मोल्स पर लीटर ऑफ एम टू पॉजिटिव आयन इन द एक्व सोल्यूशन ऑफ द सॉल्ट इज वॉट सो बिफोर वी जस्ट गो विद द आंसर पार्ट लेट मी एक्चुअली टेल यू अबाउट द डिसोसिएशन इक्वेजन फॉर द सॉल्ट एम एक्स टू बेसिकली सो इट विल बी एम एक्स टू इन इक्वली ब्रियम विद एम टू पॉजिटिव प्लस ट्वाइस ऑफ एक्स नेगेटिव से इन केस वेन टाइम टी इक्वल्स टू जीरो लेट द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन वैल्यू इन टर्म्स ऑफ सॉलिबिलिटी आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट बी वन फॉर एम एक्स टू एंड जीरो एंड जीरो फॉर एम टू पॉजिटिव आयन एंड एक्स नेगेटिव आयन बिकॉज द रिएक्शन इज नॉट येट बीन स्टार्टेड इफ आई जस्ट टॉक अबाउट वेन टी टाइम इक्वल्स टू इक्वली ब्रियम सपोज एस बी द लेट एस बी दी सॉलिबिलिटी ऑफ एम एक्स टू लेट एस बी द सॉलिबिलिटी ऑफ एम एक्स टू एंड इफ इट इज सो सो एट इक्वली ब्रियम वॉट इज गोइंग टू हैपन इज दैट वन माइनस एस विल बी द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन इन टर्म्स ऑफ सॉलिबिलिटी फॉर एम एक्स टू बिकॉज एट इक्वली ब्रियम सम अमाउंट ऑफ एम एक्स टू मस्ट हैव बीन सोल्यूबल ओके एंड देर वुड हैव बीन द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ एम टू पॉजिटिव एंड टू एक्स नेगेटिव आइन्स सो इट विल बी एस एंड टू एस फॉर x negative ion when i'm talking about at equilibrium and time t equals to equilibrium okay wherein now we i want to find out the concentration of m2 positive ion but i have been given with the value of ksp so what is the solubility product expression for the equation for the dissociation equation of mx2 it will be equals to the concentration of m2 positive ion multiplied by the concentration of x negative ion raised to power 2 its stoichiometric coefficient so it's m2 positive ion product of concentration of m2 positive ion with x negative ion with the concentration term of x negative ion raised to power its stoichiometric coefficient okay now what is the concentration term value of m2 positive ion in its in the terms of solubility it's actually s and for x negative ion it's actually twice of s raised to power 2 so what is the value of ksp given to us it's 4 into 10 raised to power minus 12 so it will be 4 into 10 raised to power minus 12 which is equals to 4s cube okay because it's it's s into 4s square because 2s square is 4s square which becomes 4s cube so basically 4 cancels with this 4 s cube is equals to 10 raised to power minus 12 and s if i just take the cube root so s becomes equals to 10 raised to power minus 4 and this s is the concentration value of m2 positive ions in moles per liter that to in solubility terms i'm talking about so this is the concentration value of m2 positive ion that is what we want to find out because the concentration value of m2 positive ion at equilibrium is s the value of s comes out to be 10 raised to power minus 4 hence the concentration in moles per liter of m2 positive ion in the aqueous solution of the salt is equals to option number b 1 into 10 raised to power minus 4 question over here is find the n factor of i negative ion find the n factor of iodide ion i negative ion in the given reaction i negative getting transformed into icl basically so this we need to find out the n factor of i negative ion in the given reaction to us so there are few steps we need to actually follow the first step is the first step is to actually calculate the oxidation state of the atom in the reactant site second to calculate the oxidation state of the atom in the product side third now we'll actually go for the difference in the magnitude of the two oxidation state 
okay and then we'll multiply that particular difference of the magnitude of the two oxidation state with the number of atoms we want to calculate the n factor for multiplied with the number of atoms of valency factor number of atoms for which the valence factor has to be calculated out that two in digits we i'm talking about so basically it's over here i negative in the reactant side and i cl in the product side talking about the oxidation state of iodine in reactant side first of all in reactant side in reactant side which will be equals to minus 1 talking about the oxidation state of iodine in product side product side which will be equals to so it's icl icl okay so let it be x let the oxidation state of iodine in icl be x talking about chlorine Chlorine has the oxidation state of minus 1. The whole charge on ICL is 0. So, X is equals to plus 1. X is equals to plus 1. So, the oxidation state of iodine product side is equals to plus 1. This is the first step. This is the second step. Talking about the third step now. Taking the difference in the magnitude of both the oxidation state. So, it will be equals to oxidation state of the product minus oxidation state of the reactant okay which will be equals to plus 1 minus of minus 1 it becomes equals to plus 2 this is difference in the magnitude of the two oxidation state the fourth step that means now what is the n factor n factor it is actually equals to the product the difference in the magnitude of two oxidation state n factor is equals to the difference in the magnitude of the two oxidation state which is plus 2 multiplied by the number of iodine atoms for which we have to calculate the n factor so over here it's i negative it's i negative for which we have to calculate the n factor and it is 1 and it is 1 basically it's i negative for which we have to calculate the n factor and it is 1 so difference in the magnitude of two oxidation state multiplied by the number of iodine atoms for which we have to calculate the n factor so it's one basically so the n factor of i negative in the given reaction it will be equals to two hence option number d is the right answer to this question question over here is the correct iupac name of the following compound is the correct iupac name of the following compound is okay so this is the compound given to us and we over here are having basically uh, no functional group attached because iodine fluorine bromine these are the halogens and they do not have any priority order basically and this is the nitro group attached it also do not have any priority basically they are considered to be the alkyl substituent attached to the parent chain okay now if i just talk about the selecting of parent chain because first and foremost thing is to select the parent chain and we'll be selecting the parent chain which actually have more number of locants present okay so this is one carbon atom the other carbon atom third carbon atom and the fourth carbon atom so we do have a parent chain which actually consists of four carbon atoms parent chain which consists of four carbon atoms parent chain which consists of four carbon atoms okay now we'll start the numbering of the parent chain from that particular side which have more number of locants present we'll be starting the numbering of parent chain from that particular side which have more number of locants present okay so it will be one two three and four now we have to name this particular compound okay that too in iupac form okay so over here since they do not have any priority they are not the functional group so we will be numbering in alphabetical order it's ido okay fluoro fine bromo cool and nitro we will be actually start the naming of this particular compound in alphabetical order of the substituents attached it's b which comes first so it will be two bromo okay then it comes the turn of fluorine f and then iodine i so it will be dash one fluoro one fluoro dash 
वन आइडो ओके डैश टू नाइट्रो एंड देन द पेरेंट कंपाउंड विच इज ब्यूटेन हैविंग फोर कार्बन आइटम सो इट्स टू ब्रोमो वन फ्लोरो वन आइडो टू नाइट्रो ब्यूटेन ओके सो इट्स टू ब्रोमो वन फ्लोरो वन आइडो टू नाइट्रो ब्यूटेन ऑप्शन नंबर सी इज द राइट आंसर टू दिस क्वेश्चन question over here is the number of structural isomers the number of structural isomers possible from the molecular formula c3h9n is what okay we need to actually find out the structural formula possible for possible from the molecular formula c3h9n okay before i just go with the structural isomers possible for the molecular formula c3h9n i'll be calculating out the degree of unsaturation which is equals to carbon number of carbon atoms plus 1 minus number of hydrogen atoms divided by 2 minus number of halogen atoms divided by 2 plus number of nitrogen atoms divided by 2 so number of carbon atoms is equals to 3 plus 1 okay minus number of hydrogen atoms 9 by 2 there is no halogen present only nitrogen plus 1 by 2 when you will calculate this out you will get the answer is 0 so degree of unsaturation comes out to be 0 for the molecular formula c3h9n hence there is no double bond triple bond or a ring present for the molecular formula c3h9n talking about its structural formulas now that means structural isomers now okay i'll just go with the one thing it's c3h9n so first can be one carbon atom two carbon atom three carbon atom and it's amine nh2 so i can just say it as one two three propanamine propanamine okay it's propana mean if i just talk about the another structural isomer it can be one carbon two carbon three carbon and nh2 group over here okay so let's count out first of all the number of hydrogen atoms so it's 3 and 3 6 7 and 2 9 and one nitrogen and three carbon atoms okay done so it's isopropylamine it's isopropylamine okay one more thing it's nitrogen in between then ch3 ch3 and ch3 it's trimethylamine it's tri methyl अमीन बेसिकली ओके खुल वन मोर आई कैन हैव इट्स एन देन वन मिथाइल ग्रुप ओवर हेयर एंड इट्स सी एच टू एंड सी एच थ्री इथाइल ग्रुप एंड हाइड्रोजन ओवर हेयर सो आई कैन से इट एज इथाइल मिथाइल अमीन इट्स इथाइल देन मिथाइल अमीन हेंस इन टोटल four structural isomers are possible from the molecular formula c3h9n option number c is the right answer well if you want to try some more structural isomers go ahead but be sure you will get again and again these only none other than this so option number c is the right answer to this question question over here is volume of an ideal gas is to be decreased by 10% volume of an ideal gas is to be decreased by 10% and the pressure increases by x% under isothermal condition under isothermal condition then what is the value of x we need to find this out volume of an ideal gas is decreased by 10% and the pressure is increased by x% under isothermal condition that means temperature is constant and it's the ideal gas now when the temperature is constant for a given number of moles pressure is inversely proportional to volume by boyle's law this we actually state by boyle's law which also means that p1 v1 is equals to p2 v2 okay fine because over here we do have final pressure value also as well as final volume uh, volume value also so final volume of an ideal gas is decreased by 10% and the final pressure has been increased by x% so by boyle's law pressure is inversely proportional to volume which also means that pv is equals to constant and which means that p1 v1 is equals to p2 v2 for the given pressures and the volume so over here p2 is equals to because the pressure is increased by x% percent, it will be p1 plus x of p1 divided by 100 and what will be v2 which is decreased by 10% it will be v1 minus 10 v1 upon 100 
substitute these two particular values of p2 v2 in the expression of p1 v1 equals to p2 v2 and then we'll find out the value of x okay so it's a p1 v1 equals to p1 v1 equals to p2 v2 what is p2 it is equals to p1 plus x of p1 by 100 multiplied by v2 which is v1 plus 10 v1 upon it is actually minus x p1 no plus x p1 and minus 10 v1 basically minus 10 v1 because the volume has been decreased by 10 percent that's why okay so v1 minus 10 v1 upon 100 and it's a p1 v1 take common p1 from here it's p1 then 1 plus 0 0.01 of the x and take common v1 and it will be 1 minus 0 0.1 1 minus 0 0.1 okay so p1 v1 cancels with the p1 v1 thing it becomes 1 equals to 1 plus 0 0.01 x 1 minus 0 0.1 is 0 0.9 okay so it will be 1 upon 0 0.9 minus 1 divided by 0 0.01 is equals to x i've just rearranged it nothing else you can also do the same thing so when you'll just calculate this out because it's now very simple to calculate for it's very simple to calculate for because it's basically it will be yeah it's 1 upon 0 0.9 minus 1 divided by 0 0.01 cool no issues with it i am cool with it so if i just want to calculate out the value of x so you will get the value of x as 100 by 9 you'll get the value of x as 100 by 9 it's very easy to solve you can go for this particular thing and hence your answer will be option number b as the right answer for this question